All right. Well, next up we have uh, Laura Filistad, uh, who is our Green Building Research Coordinator here at Rethink Green, broadcasting all the way from Guelph, Ontario. Uh, smart enough, she could do the job from anywhere. And uh, she graduated from University of British Columbia, Okanagan, in, with a Bachelor of Arts in Philosophy, Political. Sorry. Laura, you have an extensive resume. I almost stumbled on my words. British Columbia Okanagan with a Bachelor of Arts, Philosophy, Politics, and Economics. She then went on to complete a Master of Science and Planning at the University of Toronto before joining our team here at Rethink Green in July of this year. She has worked in various sectors over the years, from coffee shops to soap factories to cannabis industry. But her interest has always remained centered on local economic development and beautiful design. She's an advocate of slow living and circular economy and believes in putting a quality of life at the heart of every decision. And we're really proud to welcome Laura today, uh, my personal circular economy experts, and uh, to the next presenter. So I'm just going to bring your, uh, your presentation right back for you, Laura. Awesome. Thanks, Dave. And hi, everyone. It's really great to be joining you here today and hearing about all these fantastic ideas. Like Ambrose, it always makes me excited to know that other people are doing cool, ambitious projects as well. So I'll just wait for those slides to come up and then I'll dive in. There we go. Perfect. So as Dave said, my name is Laura Filsten. I'm the Green Building Research Coordinator here at Rethink Green. Today I'll be providing a brief presentation on the subject of green buildings and discussing Rethink Green's low carbon retrofit project. Next slide, please. So as most of us likely already know, green building is a general term used to describe a building that has a lower environmental footprint than other comparable buildings. Next slide. Over the years, several different certification centers have emerged to evaluate the construction and performance of buildings, including well-known standards like LEED and Passive House, as well as newer ones like the Zero Carbon Building Standard from Canada's Green Building Council. In the past few decades, we've seen these standards become more common and more stringent as technology and industry know-how has grown. Next slide, please. So nonetheless, if we are to meet our climate change objectives, we need to pick up the pace. According to the Pan-Canadian Framework on Clean Growth and Climate Change, the building sector accounted for 12% of Canada's 2014 greenhouse gas emissions, 17% if emissions from generating the electricity used in buildings is also included. Buildings are thus Canada's third highest source of greenhouse gas emissions, which means that by improving how we build, we can significantly reduce our environmental impact. Next slide, please. What's even better is that we already have the knowledge and technology to build better buildings. The Phoenix building pictured here achieved zero carbon performance certification from the Canadian Green Building Council. It's a three-story old warehouse that has been converted into a low carbon net zero energy workspace for 350 employees for the LeMay company. By choosing to retrofit the Phoenix building instead of construction and constructing a new building, they reduced their carbon footprint footprint for a 60-year operational period by 86%. Projects like this not only demonstrate the power of green buildings, but also the power of building retrofits. And retrofits are key to reducing our climate impact. The average lifespan of commercial buildings is 50 to 60 years, but many buildings, residential, institutional, and commercial, exist for far longer than this. These existing buildings, as well as many of the ones being built today, are not built to high energy efficiency standards and will continue to be a significant source of greenhouse gas emissions in the coming decades. By retrofitting existing buildings instead of building new ones, we can reduce the carbon emissions from the construction process, lowering our overall carbon footprint and preserving land from development. Next slide, please. Of course, the benefits of green buildings go beyond reducing greenhouse gas emissions. At the heart of green buildings is occupant health and happiness. Green buildings are buildings that recognize the limitations of our natural resources, rejoice in the world's abundant beauty, and respect the mental and physical health of members of the community by prioritizing clean air, comfortable temperatures, and access to light and nature. But while many individuals and organizations recognize the value of green buildings, the current supply of green buildings in Northern Ontario is minimal. Recognizing this, as well as our own desire to reduce our environmental footprint, Rethink Green launched our low carbon retrofit project. Next slide, please. So our mission with this project is to create a space for sustainability champions to explore, share, and develop ideas that will move Northern Ontario into a low carbon future. Next slide. Our objectives are to reduce our organization's environmental footprint, demonstrate leadership in the transition to low carbon buildings, create an informational resource to share with our network, and reduce our reliance on government funding. Next slide. 
We are guided in this project by our five core values for the project of environmental sustainability, creative collaboration, knowledge sharing, local skills development, and leading by example. Next slide, please. We envision the space as embracing the best of Sudbury's edgy creativity and kickstarting the local green building engine. Next slide, please. We hope to have flexible space that can house workshops, community potlucks, a cafe, and small events. Retail space for eco stores like zero waste shops, or bike stores, or maybe studio space for artists, as well as office space with room for our organization, affordable desks for members of our community, anchor tenants to tie it all together, and potentially even an office for a visiting environmentalist or an exchange program so we can get all those cool people at Ambrose's Charlatan Sustainability Hub to come hang out with us as well. Uh, next slide, please. To make sure this project is as sustainable as possible, we are using the One Planet Living Framework to guide our creation of a sustainability framework and make sure we address all 10 of the categories here. Next slide, please. But our focus will be on the three areas of zero energy, equity and local economy, and culture and community. Next slide, please. So we're currently in the beginning stages of this project in research and development, which uh, going to the next slide, you'll see will take us to the spring of 2021. During this phase, we're doing a market analysis, a review of the properties and some financial modeling, and we'll be releasing our feasibility study report in April. For anyone who's listening in and is interested in our project, I encourage you to look out in the next week and month for our public survey and public Zoom meeting uh, to give us your feedback and let us know if you'd be interested in being involved with our building. Thank you everyone, that's all I have.